I'll wait no longer. Good, goodbye. Look, you invite me to what you say is an important meeting. Only, I, only to... I invited you nowhere. Sir Richard Lazenby invited you here. I'd have seen your left man. Well, then, what does Sir Richard Lazenby want? I don't know. Thank you, Sir Ah, James. Ah, Sir Richard. Ah, I don't get up to my constituency in here often enough. Politics and business, James. Ah, Fogarty here. <laughs> Sir splendid. Richard. Little Miss Callan, are you wed yet? Well, no, not yet. No? Ah, would you like a seat, Sir Richard? Can I offer you anything, or shall we straight down to business? Always one for the social graces, on eating. Never one for Kant. <laughs> oh, let's to business. James, recently you bought a ship. Aye, the Maria de Gloria, over his head. Paid a price for her. Mm, to raise which price, and I believe to purchase your new house, you sell some shares to me. Mm. Oneedin steamship shares. Aye. Upon condition that Captain Oneedin should have first option to repurchase them, should I consider selling. Ah. Well, through a firm of lawyers, I have lately received a most favourable offer for them. Lawyer? From whom? An unnamed party. I'll top any offer you've had. But damn you well. Now look, if we're in competition for control of the Oneedin steamship company, we, we neither want some anonymous third party buying shares. And you want to sell them now? Mm. The offer's too good to refuse. Well, can you not wait? The offer expires in two weeks. Can you find so large a sum within that time? No. I'll pay cash. Look, uh, first option on those shares. I should have a say as to where they go. You had first option. There uh, is a way in which they could go to you even yet. Mm. How? Cash. Tomorrow. Do we need him here? How? You'll collect a large debt that's owed to you. What do you know about that? Well, you once mentioned it. I made it my business since to inquire. Last August, you delivered some shiploads of food at Rouen for Paris. Nine months later, war. Still, they have not paid you. Neither will they pay. There's a revolution in Paris. The government of France is not in Paris, but at Versailles. Not two, but three armies presently in France. The communards in Paris, the Versailles, and the Prussians surrounding both. Take more than three armies to keep him away from his money. Oh, fuck it, it doesn't seem to me you have much more business here, so I'll um, bid you goodbye. Devil you will, I'm stopping. Silly! Silly, Mr. Fogarty's just leaving. If you don't mind, Fogarty. Very well, Sir Richard. Oh, uh, take care you don't pay too high a price this time, Oneedin. I apologize for asking him. Now then, what is it that you will propose? That you go to Versailles. I will arrange safe conduct papers that should take you clear to President Thierry himself. To do what? Merely carry a letter to President Thierry. Ah, but saying what? I may tell you, just before you say it. You'd just be a damn nuisance. There's antidomy business, Bain's to sail the ship, and, well, it's not a pleasure trip, you know. Why shouldn't Elizabeth and I come? Even if we cannot be useful, we'd be in no one's way. Well, what would be the point of it? Everything cannot be measured in pounds and shillings of profit. Elizabeth and I must make an effort, and for that, I feel we need a total change of scene. What about the golden nugget? After all these months, you're just going to walk away from it? My plans are finished. We're out to stay around. I'd only be in everybody's way. There's no more I can do. And Elizabeth hates the sea. Elizabeth wants to come. We've agreed that we need a second honeymoon. Oh, well, that could be disaster. <laughs> well, that's not your concern. You know, this trip could be dangerous. Dangerous? Cruising the English Channel? Oh, I think not. After landing me in France, she goes on to Jersey to offload a cargo of house school, pick up potatoes, and then back to France. Well, I've no room for passengers. Ah, well, Anne has promised us the master's cabin. Anne? After we've landed you in France. What's Anne? What's it to do with Anne? It's not my wife's decision. What's not my decision? That James is refusing to carry Elizabeth and me. James? Yeah, well, there's no room for passengers. Well, Albert's not a passenger. He's your partner. And by the company's articles of association, you cannot refuse passage to any director on any occasion. Is that not so? It is, Anne. It is. And James to Richard Lazenby, dear. No. Well, if you decide to sail with us, uh, remind Elizabeth to pack the salva latale. That's a state paper, Oneedon. Hmm. Not official state paper. 
And it's not in English. President Thiers is not an Englishman. And it's authoritative enough. Well, I'm to take that letter. I must know what it says. Well, am I not guarantee enough for that? Uh, no. Oh, you're a careful man. Well, I'm alive. I should like to stay that way. France is in chaos. Paris is in the hands of citizen communards. Anarchists, some would call them. And fights a civil war with the rest of France. Well, they seize their chance like everybody else, eh? Well, we left France to be beaten by the Prussians for the sake of the balance of power. Now, some of us feel that a weak, resentful France, forced to enrich a strong, newly united Germany by payment of 5,000 million gold francs in reparations, but here may be sown the seeds of discord which could grow for a hundred years. Yes, but what does it say in the letter? An offer of money. Financial support to help pay the Prussians indemnity. So that they will leave France as soon as may be. A government support? No. Individuals within the city of London. And what else? Else? No, what else is in the letter? Oh. Well, merely a strong suggestion that Thiers must urgently crush the rebellion in Paris. Unless the Prussians use it as an excuse to reoccupy that city. No wonder he wanted to carry pride. Then. He will carry it. If I deliver your letter, come back with the cash in two weeks' time. Will you sell my shares back to me for the same price that you bought them for? Very well. If you succeed. Remember the arrangement? Yes, yes, James. Second honeymoon or no, <laughs> we'll pick you up. Right. Now, do not return after the 17th. Lie off the coast, await my signal, and come and pick me up. Yes, dear. Mm, never mind a yes, dear. My life could depend on it. Oh, and that cargo of potatoes, don't sell it. In fact, don't breathe a word about it. People in France starving. When I return, I'll sell it and make handsome profit, eh? Don't forget! Will he be safe in that little boat? I don't know how he can stand the bobbing without... I don't speak German. Spy in France now needs to speak German. <laughs> I'm no spy. Perhaps you're not a very good spy, but good or bad, spies shot. Look, I've told you. I've told you toy soldiers here my business in Versailles. I have a safe conduct signed by your minister back in London. Papers, they can be forged. Well, if you can't tell the difference, it's a poor look out for the German army, eh? The German army will survive you. So, you are an English merchant, a ship owner, and you hope to see the president of France with a note. You are an unlikely person. Your ministers are satisfied as to the nature of my business. Now, I'm not bound to satisfy you. I think you are. And uh, what is more, I am in a position uh, to uh, satisfy my curiosity. Here, now, go here. You shall be reported to your superior officers. What is so secret about this? It is important, yes, but not secret. Confidential. And not addressed to you. We do not wish to reoccupy Paris. Louis Napoleon made the war and we have beaten him soundly. Now, Thiers is forced to pay 5,000 million gold francs, and that is more useful than a city full of anarchists. I have a question. I'll answer no question. I said you are an unlikely postman. The note does not explain it. Now, why does a man like you agree to carry it? You have no right to hold me, and I'll answer nothing. I think you do not understand your position. Mm. This is a war, and I am a soldier. I can have you shot, and no one would even miss you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm English. You'd soon find yourself in another war, and one that I doubt that you'd win. On the other hand, I can hold you prisoner until this note and any private verbal message you have for tears is quite useless. I've told you, there is no further message. Then why a man like you playing messenger boy? Well, because I've got business of my own with the French government. No, ah, it's about it. Personal business. The French owe me money, and I want it. Money? Hmm. Payment for some shiploads of food. <laughs> You, 
You're going to see the president of France with an overdue bill? No. I believe you. Good. And I'm sure that the President Tears will be delighted to receive you. Well, then let me go on my way. Let you go. I shall speed you on your way. Elizabeth. Oh, go away. Well, if that's what you'd prefer. Albert? Oh, I'm sorry. There. Now I'm back. I had such good intentions after so long. You'll soon get your sea legs. I'm so cold and sick. I'm afraid I make a bad invalid. Cold? Oh, you've a, a touch of fever, I think. Oh, don't touch me. My head aches enough. For pity's sake, just leave me in peace. We make good time, Mr. Baines. How's Mrs. Fraser? Querulous rather than dying, I fancy, though she feels otherwise. Alors, maintenant, je le verrai. Ah, Captain Anidin. Oh, Monsieur Say. You have a letter for the President. Uh, give it to me, please. Ah, well, let's. Uh... Not addressed to you. I see our correspondence. Well, I don't know you. I don't know your authority. It is adequate, I promise you. Give it to me. I'd rather deliver it myself. Why? Well, I have a business matter to discuss. You think the President of la France does business with postmen? Do you? The President will see the letter. Give it to me. When he's read it, may I see him? That's for him to decide. I can give no better undertaking. Please sit. Thank you for not opening it. Ah, for nothing, then. It must be an offer of money, a loan to help pay German reparations. An unofficial loan. How do you know that? France is still rich, Britain is greedy, and uh, business is business. And I guess there is a condition to the loan that you should retake Paris as soon as may be. Monsieur le Ferrand, sans les conseils impertinents des Anglais. And now, your business, uh, to negotiate terms? No, no, just personal business. What? Our food for sale. If your terms are fair, I will buy it. I want to make a profit. We do not accept charity. Mm. Well? I have a first shipload of potatoes bound for Dieppe, uh, there to await my signal. I can supply two shiploads of food a week to any French port that you name. Very well, I will buy. And uh, since you are English, uh, we need only to shake hands upon it. Oh, done. Cash? Cash. Uh, well, there is another matter. An account outstanding. Some shiploads of food that I delivered none about nine months ago haven't yet been paid for. Since before the war? Hmm. Uh, who has heard you so long? <clears throat> uh, the French government. Yes, uh, but uh, where in France? Ah, Paris. Paris? I cannot pay the bills of that city. Well, Paris is in France, isn't it? It is not French. We are at war with that city. Well, one that you'll win soon enough, eh? They can eat rats, that mob. Do you not know that the Commune has passed a law suspending payment of all debts? Look, that's a debt. You can't just disown a capital city. Anyway, I'm not interested in politics. No? The politics of that mob could set fire to the world. That mob, eh? Well, your words. We miss you. A mob governed by the mob. Democracy, eh? Have you ever seen a mob? No. 
It is a wild beast. Men, women, children, all shrieking, screaming, in a frenzy, mud. Lusting, wanting blood, running and killing and burning on and on until they drop from exhaustion. This is animal. Anarchist killers and madmen. That is the mob which thinks it can govern itself. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> I'm owed money, and if you want to do business with me, you'll have to pay me. When Paris falls, when each and every one of those communards hangs from every street corner lamppost. Yes, you don't seem to understand. I need that money now. Good. Good. I have a proposition for you. Oh, what? I want you to pay postman for me. Oh. And return for what? For the money you want, for the chance to have your debt paid twice over. Go there, they may pay you. But whether they pay you or not, I will undertake to settle that account. Go where? Into Paris herself. Paris? Oh, no. <laughs> no? No! You shook hands upon our business. You are committed to it. Not take part in bribing a man. Why not? Uh, not my war. I hoped you would say, because it is contemptible. Well, it's uh, contemptible too. To take a bribe may be, yes, but if it is offered and refused, that is honorable. I'll not go. Dombrovsky. Yaroslav Dombrovsky. Well, Polish, eh? A Polish refugee soldier. Now, Minister of War for the Commune. <laughs> Large titles, these small men, eh? <laughs> Alors, you will carry the money with you. But offer it, of course, only after you have negotiated with him. I'll do no such thing. How many times must I tell you, and how many ways, that it's, it's impossible? Why? Well, because... Because I refuse. Not your only reason, surely. I don't speak French. He speaks English. So many of these revolutionaries were given refuge by your generous country at various times. Would they be as generous to me? Or would they let me enter Paris? I will show you how. But tomorrow. I have to be in Dieppe before the 17th to signal my ship. I'm not going to Paris. How do you feel now? I want to die. Don't be stupid. You should have left me in Jersey. The doctor in Jersey said you were suffering from nothing more than a, a slight fever compounded by seasickness. I'm very sick. If you ask me, you're making rather too much of it. Well, if that's the best help and sympathy you can offer, please go away. I think perhaps I should. You'll have to put me ashore in France. Oh, don't be so childish. Oh. The Commune's National Guard weekends daily. They are without hope or order. They wish only to defend their home arrondissement. We have reason to believe that you may easily, one man, pass into Paris this way. Yes, I see. I'm grateful. France will be grateful that you have changed your mind. No, I haven't changed my mind. Anyway, won't the risk be increased by my carrying the money upon me? The risk to me is increased. To you? Bien sûr. You contemplate simply taking the money in payment of your debt and running for Dieppe, but that will not be possible. You will be escorted to the Commune's lines. Oh, I see. It remains only for me to wish you Godspeed, Captain. Look, let's stop this farce. I am not going. I have no intention of going, and there is nothing you can do to make me go. Oh, yes. Money to retrieve your shares in this shipping line would make you go. Oh, I already have my money. I've delivered my note to the President. This note? This note is not delivered. President Thiers has never heard of this note. I will keep it until you meet Dombrovsky. France will remember your willing part in ending this war.
Dombrowski. Can you tell me where I can find a man called Yaroslav Dombrowski? Monsieur? Ah, you don't understand a word I'm saying, do you? Uh, here, where's your family then, eh? Your people. What is your name? No. Uh, comment vous appelez-vous? Ah, Jean-Paul, monsieur. Ah, well, Jean-Paul, where's your father, eh? Uh, un père. Ah, mon père est mort. And your mother? Vous avez une mère? Oui, monsieur. <laughs> but you can't tell me where I can find a young... Vous ne savez pas, uh, Monsieur Yaroslav Dombrowski? Eh? Non. C'est un communard. Oh, why? And an important one. Me member of the Committee of Public Safety. Uh, I don't know the French for that. Um, uh, comité. Ah, le comité de sûreté publique. Ah, ah, that's the one. Uh, no. No. Ma mère connaît très bien Monsieur Delacruz. Oh, does she like that? Well, quieter now, eh? Well, goodbye. Um, au revoir, eh? Oh, au revoir. <laughs> Excusez-moi, là. Je cherche Yaroslav Dombrowski. Oh. Non? Excusez-moi, euh, madame. Euh... Je cherche Yaroslav Dombrovski. Dombrovski. Yeah. Non? non? Merci. Euh, Excuse-moi. Euh, euh, Yaroslav Dombrovski. Yaroslav Dombrovski. Hein? What do you want? What are you doing here? There's nothing here. Look, it's an empty house. Hey, that's mine. Hey, now, look, you've no right. Look, can you? You're feeling better anyway. No. Well, I've had no food. I've a fever. I've retched and vomited for days, and all I get from you both is disapproval. Disapproval? Well, it seems to me that we've been Albert particularly most solicitous of you. Fussing. Well, you've been sour, complaining and unreasonable. I'm unwell. I hate the sea and you refuse to land me anywhere. Well, perhaps you can't land me in France, but you've time in hand to return me to Liverpool and let me go home. And still to come back more or less in time to take off James. More or less? Very well. You have been sick. I've made allowances. It has been miserable for you. But I suggest, even to suggest that we leave James at risk of his life, perhaps, oh, while we take... sticks. At risk of his life? Nonsense! Well, it's only France, not heathen savages. Anyway, James is an Englishman. You could perfectly well take me back to... Second honeymoon. Yes. Perhaps your last. You spent yesterday trying to locate Dombrowski. Why? May I inquire your name? I have very little time, monsieur. Uh, uh, Captain. You have even less. You speak excellent English. Are you a member of the uh, Committee of Public Safety? I am. Oh, well, then you'd have done just as well. Hmm? Well, Dombrowski, it's the only name that I knew. Look, I have explained all this. I'm a merchant in Paris. 
I am after some payment of some money owing to me for some ship. You are owed a debt. Yes, since nine months, I. Which you have come to Paris to collect since it has not been paid. Ah, that's right. And yet you have a satchel full of money. That's mine. It is useless to lie. I have no doubt that you are here to bribe the late Minister of War into a surrender to Versailles. What is your name? I am Felix Pia. Well, Mr. Pierre, my papers were taken from me, but if you was to look through Dombrowski them... Dombrowski is no longer Minister of War. You shot him too? No. Not him. He has merely been replaced by Delecluse. Your attempted bribery has failed. Delecluse? You are now a hostage. You will be executed with the others. You'll not keep this a secret. And when Her Majesty's government hears about this... Oh, they will hear, I promise you. Versailles has already been notified of your capture and that you are a hostage under sentence of death. Hostage in Paris, under sentence of death as a spy. What are you doing? I'm going to Paris, of course. She's going to Paris. Oh, what nonsense is this? It's not nonsense. I'm going to Paris. Oh, no, my dear, no. What could you possibly achieve? I can beg for his life. I can tell them, or prove to them that he's not a spy. Well, what else can I do? I can't stand by waiting for them to kill him. Anne, listen to me. It's not possible for you to travel to Paris. They'll not kill him. A hostage, it said. Well, spy or no spy, why else take hostages? The you... communards will shoot him. You can't go. It's impossible. All you would achieve is jail and a death sentence for yourself. Elizabeth's right. It is impossible. It's impossible. I should do nothing. I'm going and that's an end to it. Uh, no, Anne. No. I'm afraid, Anne, I must forbid it. You have no right to forbid it. A right or no, I do. No sailor from this ship will row you ashore. I shall make it an order. I am forced to say that I admire your spirit, anyway. Give me a horse and an escort, then. A horse? People are starving all over France. Horses are eaten in France now. Then I shall walk. I must return you to your ship. I shall not go. You will go. I can spare escort for that. I am if sorry. If you return me to the Charlotte Roads, I shall simply leave again. And again, until I pass your sentries without being apprehended. My admiration for your spirit and my sympathy for your predicament do not extend to allowing you to expose yourself to danger. That is my choice, sir. That it is not. You are a lady, and even your husband would not, I am sure, thank me for allowing you to behave otherwise. That's nonsense. I shall try again and again to go to him. In that case, I cannot return you to your ship, of course. Thank you. And a horse? You misunderstand me. I mean that I cannot allow you to run wild through France. You cannot prevent me. Oh, yes. If you do not give me your word now to make no further attempt, then I shall, most regretfully, be forced to detain you here. Here? Under arrest, for your own safety, until your Until my husband has been shot! For your own protection! See? I am a revolutionary and a journalist. You are a spy. What do we have in common? Dislike of time-wasting talk. We know the meaning of words. Words can kill. Did you know that? Hmm? One word will kill you tomorrow. What word? A word which you have been fond of until now, probably. That word is Onidin. Your name among those hostages who will be executed in the morning. I see. Do you think of death? 
I imagine not as much as you do. Think. Now. I won't bother. No. I doubt you indulge in midnight chats with all your victims. We do understand each other. Mm. One stroke of my pen and your name is crossed off his list. Mm. Would you like that? Yeah. It's possible. I say no more. It might be possible. What are your politics? I've known them. That is impossible. Everyone believes something, some hope, a philosophy merely to make life a little bearable. I must know yours. Hmm. They're not very subtle. I believe a man should stand on his own feet. Let nobody, politician, nobody, make decisions for him. You are a spy for no nobler reason than self-interest. I'm no spy. I believe in the need for violent revolution. So we may rebuild a socialist state. I welcome hate and violence. I embrace anarchy and bloodshed because otherwise, greedy and uncaring liars like you will tolerate any injustice for the chance one day of standing atop the dung heap. Does that strike no response in you? What reply would you like? You dare give me none but the truth in this. Then no. Your highest ideal is self-interest. Often. Excellent. I can use you. You came to bribe Dombrovsky. You will bribe another man instead, and Versailles will be as pleased with you. You're free. I give you your money. Go, and we shall see you. He is the new Minister of War, Charles de l'Ecluse. How do I find one man in the whole of Paris? This will tell you where to find him. The woman there is his little friend. Now, to succeed, you'll have to give him some romantic reason, some idealistic excuse to take your money. But he will. He will. And then I shall have his head. His or yours. What are you waiting for? Go, go. You have no right. I have the power. It is done. That's arrogance even from a Prussian. God, your tongue, sir. We are British, not defeated French, and not subject to your arbitrary whims. Frau Onedin is detained for her own protection. I'll protect her, and does not require a German force of arms. It seems it does. And what do you mean by that? If this lady was under your protection, it seems to me that you have... Ugh, go back to your ship, sir. I will release her in due course. I shall not. I require satisfaction. I think we mean different things by that one. You question me, Honor. Go back to your ship. The lady is in my protection. And you'd better explain what you meant by that slight in reference. I'm a bit of nasty. I am military commandant. Now go, I shall have you removed. Explain. If you insist. I do. You British. You see nothing but shillings and pence. I see that for a man whose honor and duty it clearly was to watch over a woman distraught with fear for her husband, you have failed, sir, and you have failed miserably. Monsieur? Madame? Uh, Souman? Oui, je suis Madame Souman. Vous voulez une chambre, monsieur? Uh, oh, no. Oh, well, I might. Um, do you know uh, Charles de Cluse? De l'écluse? Ah, yes. Oui? Yes, well, could you get a message to him, please? Je comprends pas. Uh, um, uh, un massage. Uh, tell him that he mustn't come here. Um, il ne faut pas come here. Pas ici. No, il n'est pas ici. No, faut pas ici. Faut pas? Ah. ah, il a raison. Oh, yes. A very good reason. Pardonnez-moi, monsieur, mais je comprends pas. Do. Jean Paul. Monsieur, bonjour. Do you live here? In this hotel? Um, vous restez? Ah oui, c'est ma maison. Oh, oh. Mais enfin, Jean Paul, où étais-tu? Je suis sorti, maman. No, this is this is your mother, eh? Um, uh, un mère. Uh, oui. Neither of you speaks English. Jean Paul. Ce monsieur cherche Monsieur de l'Écluse. Crois-tu que tu peux le trouver? Albert 
should have been back by now. All right, ma'am. I'm afraid you're right. They must have arrested him. Well, if they have, man, there's little we can do. I don't agree, Mr. Baines. We must do something. I think we should... No, ma'am. It's more than my life's worth to allow you ashore. Mr. Baines, if my husband is in danger... No, ma'am. Listen. I have a plan. I think it might work. Monsieur, I am Charles Delacluse. Oh, you speak English, eh? Jean-Paul said an Englishman was asking for me. Yes. Well, I tried to make them understand, but I, I couldn't. I wanted to warn you not to come here. Oh? Why? Who are you? Oh, uh, Oneden, Captain Oneden. You're in danger. Great danger. Of course. Of course. It's dangerous to be alive these days. Yeah. Do you know uh, uh, Felix Pia? Actually? Well, uh, he spared my life. Then you are unique. On condition that I came here to bribe you. Bribe me? Uh, to do what? Into surrender to the Versailles. It's a trick. If you did, he'd have you arrested. No, he will have you arrested. Oh, that risk is a little further off. Before then... Paris will have fallen. Yes. Why do you tell me this? Put yourself at risk for a perfect stranger? I'm not given to noble gestures. But you can't lead a man to his death, can you? Hmm? Hate and fear. They shot the Archbishop of Paris and who knows how many others. The Tuileries on fire. The Ministry of Finance burns. The Rue Royale is a sea of flame. Fire, death, blood. And it's still not enough for them. They mistrust even me. Well, you've been warned. Hardly, they are not quite wrong. Today, I have promised the United States minister that I will try to get out of Paris to ask the Prussians to intervene and end this senseless slaughter. Well, Ivan. 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 Il ne me reste plus de temps. Il faut se séparer. Je vais essayer de trouver les Prussiens. Mais non, c'est impossible. Les soldats ne te laisseront pas passer. Les soldats Non. Nous verrons bien. Adieu. Prends garde, Charles. meaning of this? I have come to offer for their freedom. Oh? To offer what? I have only one thing to offer, Oberst von Branke. <laughs> the potatoes! <laughs> <laughs> James will be furious. He'll... Oh, this salon! Me no, Ivan. Mais oui, c'est des salauds, des fous. Tout ce qu'ils savent faire, c'est tuer, des salauds. He says those men are pigs. I don't think so. They're only frightened, suspicious, and as tired as I. I brought them to eat, and they're going to die. For what? Why? When the brave words are all said, why? History remembers only victors. The victors are always right. Oh, les salauds, va. Ils ont osé tirer sur toi, Charles de l'Écluse. 
is strange. The heart. Of all the women in Paris, she's one to think revolution wicked and revolution of his fools and wars. And if she does not think I'm foolish or wicked. Don't you lie down and rest for a while, eh? There will be rest enough very soon. Presently, I want to know, what is the good of an unsuccessful revolution? I'm not the man to ask. Who should I ask? Florence, Roussel, Bigot, Duval. Dead. All dead. I could ask Rosigny, even Felix Pia. They leave, they're still killing men, so they must know why. Why? I used to know why. For freedom, I thought. For justice. Because it was insupportable that a man could be killed for saying what he thought. Because an emperor could jail a man because he wrote something unpopular. Because a man must have the right to earn, to earn enough at least to feed and clothe his family. Because, because, because. Tu parles trop. And I always did. A capitaine. If I, even I, don't know why. And shooting has become very near. Monsieur, I ain't talking to a stranger. I don't even know why you came to Paris. I came to collect it. Insufficient reason. I think it is time now. No!
A war that should never have been fought. Some ideas must be fought for. Oh, well, really. A good and a right idea. Of a way of winning without bloodshed. Without having to climb over corpses. No. I wish I'd had no part in it at all. Conscience? If you develop a conscience, James, what then? What then? You'll have no need of me. 